All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the June 9th IPFS Implementer Sync. Um, I guess let's uh, let's get started uh, with the agenda. I guess we'll start with some updates from folks. Um, Lytle, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. So <clears throat> uh, do we share a screen on this call? Or? Uh, sure, go for it. I think it will be useful. Oh my God, so many screens. All right, I think it's this one. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully, all right. Um, so this is more, more uh, a PSA than anything else. I open a PR with a uh, description of the current, all the behaviors we have on gateways and all the types of gateways that we have. Um, so PR, PR is on, in IPFS specs repo, um, probably want to uh, explore by looking at the rendered markdown in the uh, branch. But long story short, it's um, the intended audience for this are people who will be essentially like implementing or operating IPFS gateway of sorts. And uh, the way it's written, it's if I was to write it from scratch, what information do I need to know? Uh, so it does not go too deep into IPFS specifics, uh, more like points at existing uh, things that in ecosystem. It's more about the HTTP interop and goes very deep in like it aims to explain what the usual foot guns or things that people care about caching or uh, controlling response types uh, making sure um, the basic uh, features of http like range requests on regular files are supported and so on and so forth um, so i already uh, we already got some feedback on the pr uh, and i Every day I try to like make a pass and incorporate feedback, but if uh, like any feedback is useful, if you, especially if you find that something is missing, but as an implementer or operator, you would like to know, even if like, it's like one sentence of guideline of, hey, for example, like uh, Vasco suggested, oh, we should mention like uh, deny lists in this spec, because we have like HTTP response codes when something is blocked because of denial list for legal reasons or not, uh, we have bad bits um, that was added recently, but like, and, uh, and in general feedback uh, will be appreciated. Uh, this is like the current state, like more or less based on what Go IPFS 0.13, which will be released today, um, do. If something's not implemented yet, I will extract that uh, to separate PRs and test RFC process, which I'll mention as uh, so my like next update, but in general, this is like the base against which like, anyone from IPFS community will be able to like propose like change diff or extension, um, and that way we like talk about like specs which are not tied to specific IPFS implementation or specific like all the quirks of Go or JS or whatever. We focus on specs, and then implementers decide. Oh what type of gateway do I care about? Is it like just HTTP transport? Do I need to trust gateway or not? Or am I like using it in a web browser? Do I need all those bells and whistles, uh, 404 pages, redirects, uh, control over headers for single page applications and so on? Uh, or maybe I just want to use it for DNS link uh, hosting. Uh, so there are like too much to fit in a single spec. So right now, like most of low level details are in pub gateway and the diffs are in other files i'm open to any if you find that it's like painful to read or follow uh, please let me know the goal is to make it like reduce cognitive overhead from people who are just very fresh to like this ecosystem and they just are tasked with like oh i need to like add the gateway support to this ipfs implementation uh, so it should be like very friendly and provide all the necessary context for people. Uh, so that's like my one update on the gateway specs. And the second uh, update is that now that we will have this basic version of uh, gateway specs that we can like diff against, we already have some things in the pipeline that we wanted to like extend 
around gateways, but it was like painful because it was always in the pull request against Go IPFS. So the idea is that now that we have this like baseline uh, V0 of gateways, we could propose changes. And the, like we have no process right now, uh, but we have some prior art in either Falcon ecosystem or uh, lip 2 p ecosystem of very like light RFC process. Uh, so this is like a plan. I did not even uh, write a template for RFC yet. Uh, I'm just gathering prior art. So if you got like any like an example of the RFC process in any open source project um, that you found being like pleasant or not like not too painful, let me know. Uh, the idea is that people will propose changes against specs and uh, each like change. That change could be like a new spec for something new. For example, like like if re if we would add a, a reframe again, that would be like RFC. Um, or if you want to modify existing spec like gateway, you would create RFC and you explain why, what's the migration uh, uh, plan, and so on. And so that's the plan. And I want us to have very lightweight uh, process ready uh, in time for our meeting um, uh, in July. So to announce to the people who will be there that, hey, if you want, now you can like bring your own spec and there's a process. So you your like proposal will not disappear in the noise of issues, pull requests and so on. And I think that's like the, the most important thing like for, for, for this group that we, we want to flesh out uh, the process and we don't want to introduce too much. So it will be like the plan, my hope is that will be very light. And I, I started, uh, started gathering potential uh, things that could be very small RFCs. And I want to have at least like a few examples before we announce this to community. So we don't just announce, hey, there's a process. We'll announce that, hey, there's the process. But if you are lazy, you can just look at existing proposals and you essentially like could uh, write the new one without going too deep because it should be like a very, very light process. You should be able to like propose new thing, follow a template. Um, so those are like my two uh, announcements, I guess. Uh, and I'm open to feedback on each, uh, pr preferably on GitHub, but also if you've got any thoughts on this, uh, on the call, I'm happy to chat. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, Matt, you wanna go next? Sure. Yeah, um, I just want to check in today. Kind of, uh, actually, I'm glad to see Mikhail's on the call right here. Um, yeah, we had been prototyping out some stuff with the IPFS Elastic stuff. Our DevOps team liked it, so I mean, good work. You guys have put together a really cool project here. I wanted to check in to see kind of what you guys were expecting on your end from you know, I talked about in the past call community contributions what your guys' roadmap is there for when you're opening that up to contributions. Um, I think you would, we had talked about in Slack, uh, like privately that you might be kind of officially launching it here in a few weeks or months or so. So I just wanted to know if you guys have any updates on that timeline. Yeah, we're, we're still trying to get that out. I think that we've, um, we've prioritized some other feature work um, because we want to ship these with three storage SLAs. So it's a, it's a little bit behind where we wanted to be. We wanted to have a blog post out like basically last week saying like, hey, here's Elastic Provider, check it out. Um, we we did like, you know, the rename work and a bunch of shuffling around, but we didn't like completely complete that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're open to contributions now or in the future. Um, I think that like the, the current state of the code is such that like we should really like have a conversation, like I'll get on the call and kind of discuss it um, yeah. because it's not, it's unclear like, where to put certain features and stuff like that. Like even us, like we we thought that we would do sort of like a Filecoin integration. And then we realized like it would be much better to just have a separate project that takes URLs to car files and gives them into Filecoin. And then we can just give the URLs to the car <laughs> files to that system yeah. and just kind of disconnect them, right? Um, so there's stuff like that where it's like, oh yeah, like is it completely over here or is it integrated or whatever? Also, just like uh, swapping a lot of like operational knowledge would probably be really useful for you and your team. Like we should, um, I'll talk with Jay Chris and just get a call going with all of us um, on, on a regular basis. Um, yeah. Like as an example, um, instrument uh, cost checks and cost alerting like now 
because it's actually how you find bugs we're finding <laughs> like certain bugs like creep in and they're so subtle that you you only notice them because the costs spike it's like we had this bug in the retry logic where lambdas went from like a very reasonable cost to like a thousand dollars a day <laughs> and we're like what the hell and it's like oh a certain number of these take 15 minutes now and <laughs> that's like eventually going to exhaust like our concurrency limit and that. so um yeah yeah like uh, there's just little things like that where we we should definitely be like talking more so awesome yeah, let's get yeah. that going yeah well i'll i'll follow up you there and um we're still still pretty early stages right now i'm just kind of doing some I would call the exploration stages. My yeah, dad, yeah. Uh, you know, search through the undocumented stuff to try and figure out what environmental variables we need to set and all that. But I mean, so far it, it is it is working well. So again, props to you guys. I mean, it is looking great. Um, and then actually, kind of onto my second point, uh, or not point, I don't know, topic of discussion, <laughs> whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, Brennan reached out with the you guys are having a implementers kind of retreat thing going on in I think July. You said is that right, Brendan? Yes, I think Brendan will talk more about that. Uh, yeah, I'll bet. I'm on the agenda, but I'd love to okay. field your question, Matt. Also, uh, I mean, I, my question <laughs> probably going to answer in your uh, your bit. So I'll end right. my I'll end my segment and pass it off to you guys. And if I have follow up questions, we can go from there. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, I guess let's see a few updates from uh, from me. Uh, I think Gus cut the uh, Go IPFS 013 release earlier uh, earlier today, so it'll be rolling its way out. Um, some uh, yeah, some other things people might be interested in. So. Been pushing a little bit further on the like WebAssembly IPLD stuff. There's a link there for like a PR to go IPFS that shows like how this might work, where you could just like plug in a pointer to a WebAssembly file and that would load in your your codec or ADL and it would would do what it needed. Um, more documentation forthcoming, especially because I think this is an area people are going to want to talk about um, at at the meetup. So. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, uh, take a look. Uh, you can now do things. Uh, all of my demos look the same. It's loading a koala picture over a gateway with different types of IPLD things. Um, in order to distinguish them from Lytle's monkey pictures, you have to figure out whose demo it is. Um, and uh, you can now load a koala picture that is a bit from a BitTorrent directory, and that will work. Um, there is a few reframe uh, spec PRs that are sort of in flight if people are interested. Um, two of them are for new methods. Uh, one of them is for sort of changing the underlying transport mechanics a little bit to see um, how we want to support cacheability. So like one of the reframe, the, the reframe transport we're starting with is HTTP um, and DAG JSON. Uh, and post seemed like the thing to do because you're doing up, you're doing all sorts of operations, some are modifications, some are retrievals, uh, but people want to use like standard HTTP like caching solutions in front, many of which do not perform nicely with post. Um, and so we're thinking a little bit about how we might want to change that to better support those people without making everything like a big mess. Um, if you're interested, uh, you can follow along there. Uh, and then another one, so, uh, yeah. One little thing I'll throw at you. We, we've been specking out this little service for uh, tiny blocks. And one of the interfaces that we want is we do want to be able to get multiple blocks out of it, but we, but we want the response to always be cacheable. So the scheme that we came up with is that you do a, you do a put or a post with all the CIDs that you want and you get back a car CID and then you do a get for the car CID so that the response is always cacheable. So it, it takes two requests, but then we, we really like rely on the caching structure a lot better. So that's just like something to think about. Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess one more is uh, I was poking at some uh, WebSockets things uh, recently uh, and both noticed. So 
A, something people may not have noticed is that there's support for dialing WSS now from Gilded P2P. Um, but there's sort of an asterisk around that, which is they were having some trouble with domain names, which you sort of need for the types of uh, authentication you would require in a browser. Most people aren't using uh, IP signed things or using domain name signed things. Uh, so there's a PR for dealing with that. Um, but sort of given that there are things like Elastic Provider that are already like leaning heavily on WebSockets, um, I think there's some like opportunity here for if we use like secure WebSockets in many of like the big infra providers that will likely make it easy between that and reframe to build sort of these like light browser clients that just sort of go to go to a reframe endpoint, say who has the stuff, get a list of services, uh, a list of endpoints that support WebSockets and then check them out. And it won't work for the, you know, the ones that we can't help because we don't have the browser transports yet, right? Um, but at least it will work for like all the big info providers and then you only have to rely on something crazy like a preload node or a proxy for like the data that you actually can't reach because um, you don't support TCP or quick or something. And then later when web transport makes its way uh, into libp2p, then we'll have solutions for that too. But in the meanwhile, there's no reason why we can't support the browser ecosystem just from uh, sort of the big infra providers because they have tons of data anyway. And people who tend to make these apps also want to just, even if they have copies locally, they tend to have somebody else cache a copy for them, All right? Um, yeah. And that's, that is all for me, uh, which I think moves us on to Brendan. What's going on? Um, how's everybody doing? Good. Uh, we are working on this event, uh, this meetup in July. It's happening in Reykjavik, Iceland, uh, called the, I don't even know how to say it in English, but it's going to be the IPFS implementers all thing um, is the pronunciation. Uh, and so I'm here to sort of do two things, a signal to everybody on this. It is going to be an invite only event. The criteria for the invite is basically, are you actively working around or on IPFS? Um, and if you are, then you should be getting an invite. If you don't have an invite and you feel like you deserve one, then talk to me and I'll get you one. <laughs> the, uh, and if you have teammates who are working on stuff, they are basically de facto invited. And so just let me know what their names are so we can, we can coordinate on that. Uh, the event is happening July 12th to 16th are the sort of the meet of the days with days on either end for show up and leave um, with some events planned in the middle. But for the actual planning of the content of this, we're going to do this more in the open than um, before, because this is really, we're really hoping to sort of get community input on this as we're working on it. So to that end, this is all gonna happen through GitHub. I, can I share a screen? Is that something I can do? You Am should be able to. Um, oh, look at that. Let me pull up two uh, things. Okay, let's see if this works. Uh, share screen. Wow. Oh yeah, I should not be looking at this from localhost. I should do the actual URL, which is IPFS thing 22.onfleet.co. Um, I will put this, I'll drop this into chat, but that's the URL. Welcome to the early days. We threw this together in 15 seconds website. Uh, the only thing that really matters is the schedule and the schedule is in no way finished. This is like a hack together, rough idea of what we're thinking for the schedule and just starting to block out tracks and understanding how each of these is going to work. But all of this is driven by this GitHub repo, which if you can't see it, let me know. Uh, I think it's public. It should be public. And the way that this works, when you want to change an event, you go into this events thing, you find the track that you want to edit. Hey, we want to add a talk for IPFS and WASM. You come down here and you manipulate, yeah, I want to take on you know, this open slot. File PR that changes this, that'll update the website. And so hopefully we can do a lot of the coordination of the actual event content just on GitHub because all of us are on GitHub and develop it that way. That will deploy to this thing and we'll be able to all see what's going on. Uh, one UX note on this, you have to click this thing to actually get the schedule for each track. Um, this is sort of more high level view. 
And the thing I really want to do on this call is a let all of you know that this exists and ask for all of your feedback on um, the, the content itself. We are here to shape this event to work for us. It should really be driving the content. I've had a number of requests for, can we talk about gateways? Can we talk about uh, identity and access control? We need to talk about data transfer, like a number of things that folks really want to get in on the weeds on. Um, this is our chance to shift this. And you get to like shamelessly advocate for like, I'm only going to be here on Wednesday. We should really do that event on Wednesday type thing. And so if that's happening as well, let me know. I'm going to try and juggle scheduling constraints as we go. Um, but so that's the, the announcements out of things and the requests for feedback and, and to solicit PRs to this thing. I'm going to be reaching out to a lot of folks individually. Each of these tracks, we're really looking to have a track leader um, and a uh, like at least one really solid, really well-prepared kickoff talk. Uh, to anchor each conversation with supplemental talks that maybe are uh, like the kickoff talk. We ideally have someone who is really going to put the time into putting a whole track onto like a really great foot for each conversation. What I wanted to open up this, I wanted to spend some time here and just ask some of everybody on the call's time just to get your input on the actual high level. Hey, you're looking at a grid of effectively um, this sort of the format for the, for the event itself. It's basically three tracks, which would be three rooms. Um, that and then space to break out and hack and work. There are, uh, as if we understand correctly, the venue will also have additional breakout rooms. So folks sort of come up with more uncomfy, hey, I just want to pull these four people into a room and work out an idea. There should be space for that, um, even like a room with a door that closes. But the there will be a hack space. There'll be like kind of our la usual loungy spots. But what I really want to get everyone's feedback in is are these sort of three tracks running across the days of stuff that we want to talk about. I, we really have some work to do to actually flesh out what goes in each of these tracks. Um, and there are some, a lot of specific sort of details and needs that I've been collecting for the community that I'm going to, in the coming days and weeks, start to put into each of these blocks. But from a high level, I want to get, hey, what's missing from this list? From like a blinking red lights, there's no like top level spot to put this. Um, so that's the question I'd like to ask this group. First question I would have, are you imagining most of these tracks as talks or workshops? So I, and I guess, mm. what does a workshop in, entail, right? Are, are people getting together to exchange ideas, uh, you know, talk through various things, or is this more of a conference style, go to your speaker, listen to them talk, maybe five minutes for questions at the end. Okay, on to the next one. Totally, totally, great question. And the answer is somewhere in between, right? I think it, this is somewhere between a hack week and a conference. Um, we don't know where it's gonna land yet because we need to feel out what everybody's ready to do. There's definitely, uh, what I have initially proposed for this is that we have a lot of space for workshopping and that workshopping is facilitated. So there's a track leader for each of these and a person who has identified, hey, we have some discrete goals in each of these areas that should be things that our workshops are working toward. And we have a set of folks with expertise in disparate parts of our ecosystem that need to bring their knowledge to bear on these topics, right? Um, if we think about data transfer, like a lot of folks are doing new protocols built out of car files. Bit swap and graph sync have gone through a number of changes. We need to like get updates on some of those things. Who is going to be in charge of like making sure that knowledge is disseminated? Sure, some of that might be best. You know, there may be different sort of distributions of talk to workshop for each of these where, ah, you know what? The majority of this, like IPFS and WASM, that feels like that needs to be more workshop, quite frankly, because we're in early days for this and we don't have a ton of like, oh, we're, we've implemented this. Like, Dean, you have stuff that, you, that you've been working on. A number of other folks have proof of concepts. But like, we're, I don't think we're at the phase right now where we could give like super sophisticated talks on what's working in this space. But if we did like IPFS's infrastructure and we talked about gateways, like as we've seen on this call, I, I really want to hear about Elastic Provider and that like, I want to cajole the Daghouse folks for a really solid Elastic Provider overview talk and like get, get some details disseminated about that. And so I think it really, we're, we're still filling this out is the short answer. Um, but we're all gathering ideally in Iceland and ideally we're making this what we need it to be on a per track basis. Does that answer your question, Matt? In, in, in the dodgiest way possible? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like you guys are kind of still flushing it out. Um, and 
and are looking for feedback. So, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of great things on here. Uh, it seems like a good event. So, yeah, we're not going to waste anybody's time. Like you're going to go like the, the thing that you can trust is that this is going to be a really high signal conversation with a lot of folks who know exactly what they're talking about and have really articulate questions. We really do want to rotate in a lot of a healthy number of new folks who are like ramping up into our ecosystem. And we want to make sure that they are really getting a chance to pull information in from folks who've been around for a little longer. I think it's very important that we actually do a bunch of that knowledge dissemination. Do you guys this, have, um, this. Are you guys going to have like, I guess what I would call blocks of time that aren't anything scheduled? Uh, one piece of feedback I could provide from previous IPFS camp is there was so much happening. Mm -hmm. like, too much. Like, too like much. I, I, yeah, but I feel like I never got the chance to actually talk through some of these like ideas that were running through everybody's heads as a result of these great talks that had just been given. Um, mm -hmm. So I, 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 I don't know. I don't want to dictate how you guys are running. No, it. I love it. I'm, I'm with you there, Matt. I've, having yeah, been yeah. at those things. Michael, what's up? Well, like, okay, so I, I don't know when people decided that, like, um, unconferences means that you schedule shit ahead of time, um, because that's <laughs> not how unconferences work, but, like, that's a that's how, like, all of our unconferences have worked, and it's kind of insane. Um, like, don't, don't do any unconference schedule. Like, I really like, one of the nice things about an unconference is that when you have multiple days, no days are filled out. In the morning, everybody talks about what they care about. And the next day gets filled in with things that are basically follow on conversations a lot of the time or things that people wouldn't have thought of bringing up ahead of the time. So um, not bringing like an unbelievable agenda uh, is actually much better and more conducive to like having deeper conversations actually. And so if we have some unconference time in there, I would just really encourage us to not allow people to sign up ahead of time, not try to schedule it ahead of time. Just in the morning, it's uh, it's on a paper board and you sign up and you put things into slots and the next day isn't up until the next morning. Um, and that really frees it up to just be like the ongoing conversations and evolutions of the ongoing conversations that, that are going on instead of what everybody thought this event should be before they got there, right? No, that's a really good piece of feedback. I think the, I having been at these events too, Matt, I, I feel I feel very similarly of like I want I want more time to just unpack what I just heard and ask. I think one of the concerns that I have with like just talking Q and A format is like Q and A is is very it has a specific orientation where all of the questions are flowing to the speaker. And and I was mentioning in planning this conversation, planning this thing, like I was hoping for like the physical act of somebody who has really done their homework. And I really do think that it's important that we have a key set of folks who have done their homework to help elevate discussions to um, the caliber that they really need to be. Finishes a talk and then joins a circle. And, and then we all sort of get a chance to unpack and I di digest that, but not necessarily have the questions need to flow through um, the speaker. And ideally from there, we can organically evolve that into a discussion that has more room for what about, sorry, I'm ignorant to, can someone please catch me up on? and um, have you thought of who has read this white paper um, type conversations? So I hear that loud and clear. Uh, Michael is speaking to the unconf side. I think we do need to have like a serious uh, answer to like, why not an unconf? <laughs> Just like, why not have unconf days if we're not going to do them? Um, because in my mind, I totally agree that the, if it's a scheduled ahead of time, then it's not an unconference. Like by definition, unconference is just trusting the attendees to set the tone. Uh, I think there's, in my mind, one of the things that I want to be very cognizant of is IPFS is six, seven years old now. Like, yeah. like we know a lot of the problem spaces. Like we know that content writing is a thing. We know that data transfer protocols are a thing. We know that we need to talk about garbage collection or if we're talking specifically about uh, go IPFS. We know we need to talk about car files and HTTP transfer. Like we have some of this, these things that I want to make sure that at the end of this, everyone leaves with this really discreet sense of like, there were conversations that we felt blocked on for some amount of time. Like the IPFS and WASM thing is just kind of this like lump on like, are we doing this? Are we not doing this? How is this happening? Like, what's the deal? And like, I would like to leave with, oh, hey, we actually got together and at least move the ball a little bit forward on we're gonna explore these three options and this is how this is gonna land. And when IPFS camp in the main happens, we actually have our act together and we can like sort of have an orientation as a community to work from. Not everybody needs to agree on, oh yes, we are definitely doing laws of IPFS, 
but we do all need to at least know what everybody's up to and what the plan for moving forward is so that we can know who to talk to is my, is my feeling to try and make sure that we get some directionality out of this. Does that resonate, Mike? No, Michael, pardon me. Yeah, yeah. Um, something that I've seen work really well in these situations is that you kind of split the day. Um, and in the morning, you do the one to many talks. Um, and in the evening, you leave it open to unconference. And so that, that one to many in the beginning ends up kicking off a lot of ideas and conversations that feed into the schedule. But you're not like kind of forcing the schedule based on what's there. Because there, there's like a lot going on and nobody knows all of it. We, we, we know that we we know that there's just like a lot of one to many stuff that needs to happen. Like we like I, I, I do need to spend like 20 minutes just talking about all the stuff that we've been doing and all the stuff that's like coming out and why we've been doing it. Like it's just there's we haven't had the time to really surface a lot of what we've already learned and what we're doing. So um, that totally like needs to happen. Um, but the follow-up conversations from that to dig into the details, like that should really be fueled by like what people care about the most. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dictate that like, no, 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 we need to do another two hours of elastic provider stuff. That's like what people are really interested in is like, how does this tiny block service work that you're talking about? <laughs> like, like there's all kinds of little things that we're doing that might actually be more interesting to people. Mm -hmm. Matt, did you have a thought? Uh, the only, I mean, I agree with everything that you just said there, so <laughs> I really have no thoughts on that specific topic. Uh, the only other question I would have is uh, like the physical location where it's being held. I know, um, I'm, I'm mainly asking because I know if I say I'm going to Iceland, my wife is going to be like, well, can I come with? Then I'm like, okay, can I put her in a hotel? And she goes, explore, we talk tech, um, that kind of thing. So is this going to be like a retreat kind of off to the side or is this going to be like a, um, you know, because IPFS camp initial was like way off in the countryside. Mm -hmm. in Spain. Beautiful be it. It was bus beautiful. ride out of Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not a lot of exploring yeah. to be done there. Um, yeah. Is there, so the, the, of course, have an idea of where the location is going to be here? We do. We haven't, uh, the venue should be locked tomorrow or Monday. Um, so I'm not going to declare the venue right now. And, uh, but the, we're targeting Reykjavik, Iceland, and so like that is like actually an in the city of Reykjavik, which is not massive, but it's big enough that only city. <laughs> you're, yeah, your partner won't be like totally in the boonies and be like, "Congratulations, you have a fifty-kilometer walk back to Barcelona." That won't be like part of it. That's uh, so. Um, hopefully, yeah. that answers that question specifically. Yeah, it does. And okay. I will also say too. I mean, I would love to, you know, a chance to grab like beers or whatever with you know a lot of the guys here. I think being close to a city like that would be a lot of fun for. That's that's really part of my real hope. This yeah, well, half the fun is just in like, hey, all of you have committed to joining a Zoom call and listening to me talk for for a month. <laughs> <laughs> let me get you. A, yeah. Let me get you a drink of choice. Yeah, but um, that's really appreciated. Uh, Michael, the, the suggestion of talks in the morning and uncoff in the afternoon, I think is a really, really just easy to understand format that um, I can get behind. So I'm gonna go advocate for that and we'll see how that goes. Um, and uh, yeah, I would really solicit all of your feedback and the, the please, please, please file PRs. My job is going to be conversation starter in chief at, on that repo. So if you post something there, I'm, I'll be all over it. Uh, but in the meantime, Really hoping everybody can join. I think that I've talked to a number of folks. There is a lot of excitement for an event like this. We're getting a lot of really good responses and a lot of folks who are feeling similarly like, hey, we've learned some stuff and we really do need to kind of do a share out on a lot of that. And, and I think that's super exciting. So yeah, more to come. Uh, rolling updates over the coming weeks. Hopefully you will see a flurry of activity next week, followed probably by a bit of a lull as we, because it will be, once everybody gets locked and knows whether they can make it or can't, then I'll leave you alone for a bit. I'll bother you again in the two weeks prior to the event and say, where's your talk? <laughs> and ask you to do homework. But my one request that I'll tell you, I'll warn you about now, is I'm really going to be trying to, because the event should theoretically be below enough people that we can actually reach out to individual attendees. We will be asking if folks have done their homework. And most of your homework is just know your own tech. But if you're going to attend X track, I'm going to make sure that there's like reading circulated for when you're on the plane on the way there type thing uh, so that we can all show up informed and ready to talk and move the ball forward. But 
if you choose to not do that, I mean, you're an adult, so I can't stop you. <laughs> so you didn't do your homework. <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, there's no, it's a very, it doesn't have much teeth to it, but uh, I will, I will ask. One. But cool. You, That's all I have. I had a question. Do you think it makes sense to, before people have like signed up for sort of the, the, some of the talks and things they, they want to give to have people be putting in like, time slots as opposed to like I just want to talk about x because it it may be that we've like misadjusted and it turns out that there's like a million people that want to talk about you know performance and content routing and like two people that want to talk about privacy or it's the other way around or and so like the the tracks may have to like it's like a, it's like a good outline for like we think these are good problem areas but mostly tell us where you want to go and if we see one's getting too big then we probably need to break it up 100%. Yeah, I think that if the if the tracks look like they did on the on, do on the site today, on the 16th, we've done something wrong. Because if, that means we're not listening to what people want to talk about. And we're not adjusting based on that. And so like, I've been I've been collecting needs. I've been going through like YouTube videos and annotating stuff, <laughs> like trying to pull together, hey, this is what the community actually wants to talk about. If people can start filing PRs, I would like to talk about this for this amount of time. Hey, I really need half an hour. Hey, I really need 45 minutes cool and and let's let's find a way to make that happen because that's really the point is to make sure that the actual folks who are building ipfs and the folks who want to join that group have a clearer on ramp um, so yeah yeah i mean hopefully that answers the question i definitely i, I th thoroughly expect to be re retitling entire tracks and like combining things and moving stuff around okay cool Anything else on people's minds? All right. I guess then that's a wrap. Thanks, everybody. And uh, see you. See you next time. Thanks so much.